Howdy friends, Steve DePoya for the Rose Realty Team with this week's Real Estate Vlog. You know, this is an interesting one. I, I think I mentioned last week that um, uh, I was gonna do this what homeowners want post COVID. And when I did the research on this, what I actually found out that a lot of what the new construction developments that are going on throughout the Metroplex actually incorporate a lot of this, a lot of these um, items here. Now, obviously they started building these before COVID, and they had their plans developed and they had sent them to their local municipalities, you know, pre COVID. And so it's interesting that, that a lot of these things, that some of these things you're going to, we're going to talk about today actually were already in place and already being developed, you know, prior to the, uh, prior to the COVID and the lockdowns and all those kinds of things. So kind of interesting. So let's get into it. So number one, less dense living. So this isn't something like the, 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 the this number, number one, not really anything new. Um, but also at the same time, um, with the advent of COVID-19 and the China flu and all of that, people wanted to, people want to move out of the cities, out of these apartment living where you're wall to wall with your neighbor, because you don't know what's going on the other side of the wall, right? You don't know whether they're, they're sick in there or whatever's going on. And so people want less dense living. They want to opt for single family homes where they can control their own environment. I think that I think that's kind of the key. Controlling their own environment is the thing that people that people are looking for. They want to reduce the access to their place, to their to their house, to their dwelling um, from a from a common area. So they don't want to go into the lobby and up and up the elevator up to their place um, or up the stairs or whatever. Because again, you don't know kind of who used that elevator or that common space. You want something that's your own that you can control. That you control your environment. You want your own storage again who doesn't i mean look around the metroplex i mean you know and every on almost every corner you can find a couple of things you can find a nail salon a donut place and a laundry uh, and, a, and a dry cleaner and every other corner you can find um a storage place i mean seriously come on um we're, we're like hoarders of junk and stuff right and so they but the, but they want their people who are looking for their own storage that's most most likely Again, place that they can control in their own house. So whether that's a you know um, a pantry or a big closet or an attic, we don't have basements here, but you know maybe a place in the garage, that kind of thing, where you can store your own stuff. And they want their own outdoor space, right? Who doesn't? Who doesn't want to? Who doesn't want to kick back after a hard day uh, with your wife and an adult beverage and watch the kids, you know, playing in the yard? They want their own outdoor space. Um, two, flexible floor plan. Now, you, there's a common thread running through this flexible floor plan. You know, dig it. So they want a bedroom. The people want a bedroom that can become a home office. As a matter of fact, my, my office here is, a, is, is, a, is, a, is the second bedroom in the house. So there you go. They want two master suites. Two master suites so that, so that if they want, if they, want um, uh, if they have to bring in um, mom, mom or dad, mom or dad have their own have their own suite as well right they want a casita that can be that can be converted into living space um, a bedroom or there you go again workspace or a home office right um, next they want a bonus room bonus rooms are cool because you know today you can everybody can be sitting there watching um, the latest Star Wars movie together with the popcorn and all of that and tomorrow it could be it could be a space that we you kind of convert into a in a playroom because the kids have a play date you know so they want these bonus rooms that are kind of flexible and then again home office now w why is home office coming up so much two things number one um with because of the COVID 19 and people working from home there are some companies that realized that number one yeah, there's a benefit of being in an office where you can communicate and you can collaborate and all that kind of stuff but all, they've also found out that 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 people are more productive at home. Now, the dirty little secret is you're not going to work eight or nine hours if you're working from home. You're likely, like, likely to work 10 or 12 or 15 hours if you're working from home. Also, people, we kind of recoup hours, right? So you don't have to get in your car and drive 45 minutes or an hour to work. You kind of roll out of bed, um, you know, kind of comb your hair, sit, sit in front of your computer, and bam, you're working. Right. And so you're going to you, you're going to you're going to work more hours if you're working from home. And so people, companies are saying, hey, you know, um, 
um, people could start to work where they want to. Just read something the other day, I think it was Siemens, who said that they're in, in, implementing a policy where people can work any place in the world that they want. This is, a, this is something that IBM had back in the uh, 1999, 2000, early 2000, something like that, until they said, we have all this real estate, we're gonna have to utilize it, and they kind of brought people back. But you know, companies are going to allow people to go out and work where they want, and so people are going to want you know workspace. Three amenities. So people are going to be paying big bucks for houses, maybe HOA fees and that kind of thing. They want amenities to come along. Now these amenities, some of these amenities are per, let's call them personal amenities that are, that are attached to the house, and some of them are amenities that attach to the attached to the um, uh, attached to the community. So outdoor kitchens, hey, that's a personal amenity. Pools can go either way. Do you, have a, do you have a yard for a pool? Great. Dig a hole, you got a pool. Um, on the other hand, um, all of these communities have one or multiple pools that people have access to. Now, this kind of goes to that common area again, but if you're outside and you're not in the lobby, which is closed in, you know, a pool area, a common pool area is, is, is primo. Patio space, again, that is a combination of patio space in your house and a common area where you can gather with friends. Exercise rooms. Hey, I had an exercise room in our previous house, and I got to be honest with you, we spent a lot of money on equipment and, and supporting the floor and all that kind of stuff. Um, be honest with you, we probably only, probably only got utilized about 25% of the time, right? Um, so joining, so having a, a, a gym or an exercise room associated with the community the, where the, that you pay for through your HOA dues, people are, people are jazzed about that. Fire pits, fire pits again, are something that can be your own personal fire pit in your backyard, or a communal fire pit where you, where you gather with your friends and say, hey, let's, uh, you know, it's Friday, let's gather there every Friday at 7.30, you know, talk about, the, talk about what happened this week, talk about the kids and have an adult beverage. You know, it's great, it builds community and it builds the spirit of the environment. Outdoor TV and bars. Okay, so look, I mean, in, in, in our house, we have an out, outdoor space. We've got a TV out there. We don't have a bar out there, but we do have an outdoor kitchen, okay, um, with, a, with, with, with a fridge. So this, is, this, is the, this could be a combination of something that is my personal thing or a, a, a thing that, that, that the community owns, the HOA owns. And so we're going to we're gonna say, hey, let's meet down there and have some fun and just kind of talk and shoot the breeze a little bit. Number four, location, location. Took one of the locations out there. People are relocating together. So people, so how many times, we have a lot of friends. We have a lot of friends who moved to the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex because their kids and grandkids were here. So the grand, grandparents wanted to be by the, by, by the grandkids and their kids, right? So, but at the same time, they're saying, okay, so now that we're all able to work kind of from wherever we want, is, is this where we want to be? Is, you know, um, is is Michigan where we want to be? If it's not, hey, let's move someplace else like the great state of Texas. Let's move to the great state of Texas. Let's all move there together. We'll buy two or three house, we can buy two or three homes in a common area. We'll all kind of, we'll kind of live there or support one another, those kinds of things. I think the support system is what people are looking for and talking about here. Looking for second homes. Now, second homes doesn't necessarily have to be five or six states over, but if you're kind of like, let's say you're, let's say you're, let's say you're living in the, met, the Metroplex, um, you know, you can go out to like the Possum Kingdom area, uh, up to the Texoma area, buy a second home up there, a place where we can kind of get get away and relax okay um the the current house is it a dream shelter in place you know there's this thing i saw on uh, on, on facebook it was a real estate agent with a mask and a husband and wife with masks and the real estate agent says can you picture yourself being quarantined in this space right it's kind of like a sick joke in a way but at the same time, it's true, right? You want to you want the, your dream shelter and place area where you can, um, where if you if you if there was a quarantine or a lockdown again, could do you have the space? Do you have the inside personal amenities that are going to allow you to get on with your life, okay, and live the life that you're looking for, and not saying. Uh, gee whiz, you know, we don't have an outdoor kitchen or we don't have a, any patio space or whatever, and we're forced to kind of just go in the driveway, okay? So do you have the amenities inside your house that you can, that you can live comfortably? Let's say, let's say you had two kids and a husband and wife, you know, can the four of you live in this 2,000 square foot house comfortably without having to worry about bumping into one another? That's an interesting question. 
at number 4.5 uh, second homes. So people are looking for second homes. People that live in these densely populated areas, like let's say downtown Fort Worth or downtown Dallas or, or downtown city of Denton, um, that don't necessarily want to move or maybe can't move right now, or maybe you're kind of locked in for some reason to their current living situation, they're looking for second homes. These second homes are a combination of investment properties that maybe they would rent out or in, in vacation homes. Okay, so that's what they're looking for. Now, now interestingly enough, they're looking for these, these second homes next to airstrips. Now, we're not talking about next to DFW or Atlanta International Airport, but we're looking for them next to maybe smaller airstrips. There were a lot, I guess probably the mid 80s, uh, 80s and 90s of last year, um, last, last century rather, um, they, what became popular these little private airstrips and they had houses built around them. So you could fly your Cessna 172 in with the family in the back. You, you, you kind of land, you kind of park in your hangar and you go kind of Uber out to your Uber out to your house, which is maybe a mile away or something like that. Right. So it allowed you to fly in when you needed to and fly out when you needed to. Um, interesting, interesting concept. They go for these second homes by a lake so they can go fish. Nothing better than going out on the lake when you're up, when you're tense and uptight and just not even fishing, just hanging out, right? On, 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 on the, 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 the lake, um, close, to, close to an airport. Okay, so if you don't have one of those little private airstrip kind of dealies going on, smaller airports. Think of Grayson County up in, uh, Grayson County Airport up in Grayson County. Think of, uh, think of airports up in Grains, uh, Gainesville. Think of the size of the airport in Addison. Now, Addison's in the middle of a city, but think of how small that is compared to DFW again. Someplace else there that you were able to take like a little commuter jobber in there um, and then Uber over to your house and spend a, spend a week or a couple of weeks there. Uh, they want to get out, way out, so in, in a secluded area. So if you're stuck in the city and a, another virus or China, China flu comes in, right, can you kind of escape to this, to this, this secluded area where you're able to kind, to kind of hang out for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Hey, I'd much rather be, you know, in a in a um, in a, um, in a in a secluded area on a lake rather than stuck in the city if the, all this were to happen again. Okay, and then tiny house, tiny houses are making a bit of a comeback. They were popular around uh, 10, 12 years ago. They kind of went by the wayside, and now the now they're starting to have a comeback where people can take their, their tiny house, stick it on a kind of a postage stamp kind of lot, you know, maybe a thousand square foot house, something like that. They're rather inexpensive. You can get them for fifty, seventy five thousand dollars. They build that, and you can get you can get away. You can get away from it all, be safe out there, and not have to worry about you know you know the next door neighbor or you know break down society, those kinds of things, right? Healthcare. People want to and need to be close to healthcare. So it's not just okay. I'm a thousand miles out, and I don't, you know, I don't know what I'm next to. But they want to be close to healthcare just in case, you know, you break your leg cleaning your gutter. You know, you don't want to say, okay, we have to chop your leg off, right? You want to be close to healthcare so you can take care of yourself and your family, and not have to worry about. It. So those are some those are some interesting um, um, in interesting tidbits of what people are looking for post COVID. I found them sort of interesting, and what was really interesting to me is again some of the builders that we work with have already th uh, thought about this several years ago, and some of the complexes and and and, and, and neighborhoods that they're building today kind of kind of support some of these things that people that people are looking for. So it's rather interesting. Coming up next week. Um, next Friday is the 4.5 myths that the new home buyers have about credit. This is really interesting because this is something that we, that the Rose Realty team has been talking about for maybe two years now. Um, when we talk, when we do our new home buyer seminars, um, we try to, and we try to you know, impart this knowledge onto people. And this is going to be an interesting one because there's a lot of, still a lot of false information out there that the first time home buyers don't quite get. And so we're going to kind of, we're kind of gonna, gonna kind of uh, open up the kimono and and let them in on a bunch of information. So I hope you hope you find hope you tune in for that. This is Steve DePoe with the Rose Realty Team. I'm gonna bounce. <laughs>